नमस्ते गणेश जी नमस्ते नमस्ते वेलकम एवरीबॉडी तो वील स्टार्ट आवर डिस्कशन लेक्चर नंबर थ्री विच इज ऑन कंटिन्यूस हैप्पीनेस एंड प्रोस्पेरिटी द बेसिक ह्यूमन एस्पिरेशन नमस्ते एवरीबॉडी सो विद दिस बैकग्राउंड वी कैन टेक अप क्वेश्चन सो वेन वी आर सेंग हैस देर इज अ डेफिनेट डेफिनेशन how can happiness be the same for everyone happiness uh, is uh, means something different for every human being so how do we say happiness is the same yeah this is generally what we think but what we have done is we have defined happiness here happiness is to be in harmony and unhappiness is to be forced to be in a state of disharmony or contradiction now we can all verify whether this definition of happiness holds good for me or it does not hold good for me right so if we verify you know within ourselves and see that yes this definition of happiness holds good for me that is i am in a state of happiness whenever i am in a state of harmony on the other hand the moment i have in i am in a state of disharmony a state of contradiction within i am in a state of unhappiness so if i can verify this for myself that happiness is to be in harmony then at least for me this definition holds good and like that every one of us can verify every one of us can verify and see that this definition of happiness is to be in harmony is true because i am in a state of happiness and i am in a state of harmony with it the moment i am in a state of disharmony or contradiction i am in a state of unhappiness this each one of us can verify and if we can verify we can see that the meaning of happiness is same for all of us in fact the way we have been defining happiness you know that is that is creating problem if you think that i get happiness by eating you know rice or particular kind of food then it will be different for different people different people have liking for different types of food yes this is exactly the question i had yes yes but that's not the right definition of uh, happiness in fact this you know right from the beginning we are saying continuity of happiness and this we should keep in mind that what we desire for is not just the momentary happiness what we desire is the continuity of happiness so this has to be kept in mind you know? and everything that we are talking about happiness has to be talked about with this at the background you know that it's not that i just want happiness for the moment i want happiness in continuity so we have to understand what this happiness is so any momentary happiness that we are talking about right will not work for this continuity of happiness and when we talk about this momentary happiness you know then you see that it means different for different people so if happiness is to be in harmony then it is going to be same for all of us right if happiness means to be in harmony you know within and with the world around there can be continuity of it but we cannot have continuity of happiness by eating one particular kind of food or the other kind of food. one kind of sweet or another kind of sweet right? yes so there the continuity is not possible even if we have enough physical facility and there is no limitation right you cannot go on consuming it and you know get this state of happiness in continuity mm. but when we are working for our happiness we you know in our tradition it is said that one should not have desires and here we are saying that we keep on trying for our own happiness so isn't that being very selfish for ourselves See, what we are saying is is that 
let's have the right desire not that we don't have any desire so let us have the right desire this is what we are saying and when you have the right desire it is the desire for continuity of happiness and prosperity and now we are talking about this continuity of happiness now if we understand that our right desire is for continuity of happiness then we will see that it is true that every one of us is working for continuity of happiness right in that sense you know if you want to call it selfish yes each one of us is selfish but let us be clear that when we are trying to work for continuity of happiness then the situation is very different when you are working for momentary happiness situation is different mm. when you are working for continuity of happiness situation is different the moment you start thinking you know for continuity of happiness right which is the basic desire we realize that this continuity of happiness can be there only when we are in a state of harmony and when we want to be in a state of harmony we realize that what is of significance is relationship harmony and coexistence so to ensure happiness and continuity of happiness we have to be in harmony right and when we look at that we see that what is naturally acceptable to us is to be in relationship to be in harmony to be in coexistence so to ensure continuity of happiness we start working for understanding this relationship harmony and coexistence right and then have that feeling that thought of relationship harmony and coexistence and of course you know behave and work with that feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence so this is what is needed for me to ensure continuity of happiness within myself and this we will see as we go along you know when we look at the details of you know understanding the harmony at different levels and living in harmony at different levels we ultimately find that to ensure continuity of happiness we have to understand this relationship harmony and coexistence we have to ensure this feeling and thought of relationship harmony and coexistence and we have to work and behave on the basis of this feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence now if i do that then all these three things are ensured together that is my own happiness happiness of the other and happiness of everyone hmm. this is what we are calling as swarth parartha and parmarth so parmarth means the meaning the purpose the happiness of all well being of all so if i have this feeling this understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence and then the feeling and thought of it and then the behavior and work according to it then it ensures my harmony my happiness it ensures the harmony and happiness of the one whom i am sharing so the other and ultimately it you know results into the harmony and happiness of everyone so well being of one and well being of all so this being selfish in the real sense will ensure this you know purpose or desire of the other and of the you know of everyone so we have to be selfish in the true sense we are not selfish in the true sense this is the problem and as a result we are not in a state of continuous happiness within and we are causing unhappiness for others yes that is very beautiful we may start with being selfish but then we see that 
our happiness is in having everybody happy that's very nice to see yes so what we are doing we are trying to be happy today momentarily in the process we are in contradiction with everyone and of course we are in contradiction within so everybody is unhappy now with this understanding of continuity of happiness you know and that happiness is to be in harmony if i now work for continuity of happiness i will work for my happiness continuity of happiness continuity of happiness of others and everyone so i will ensure this swarth parath and parmat three, all three of them yes so when we say happiness is it the same as being self satisfied is it only a mental state is it uh, like we said harmony so is this bliss there are so many words that people use for happiness so there is confusion about what exactly uh, these terms are also yeah so we said that happiness is to be in a state of harmony mm. right and yes. who feels this harmony certainly the self the consciousness mm. so of course it is a mental state right because this happiness is felt this harmony is felt by the self by the consciousness so we have to certainly bring in this consciousness but today we think that when it comes to consciousness it is something vague which is not true it is vague for us because we have not paid attention to the self to the consciousness we have not tried to understand the self the consciousness therefore it seems to be something very vague but what we are saying is that it is possible for us and it is necessary for us to investigate into the self into the consciousness and when we start investigating into the self into the consciousness we are able to understand the self understand the consciousness and it does not remain vague in fact we will start seeing that the self is nearest to the self right so i am nearest to myself therefore i can understand myself better than i can understand things outside but unfortunately i have not been paying attention to myself and therefore i am not able to you know observe myself and understand myself so when we do that we will be able to understand the self the consciousness and understand it with more authenticity than i can understand things outside right so when i understand the self and i understand that this is need of the self this continuity of happiness the harmony is the need of the self then i can see that yes it is a condition of the self a con- in a condition of the consciousness right and i can identify what it really means i can exactly identify what happiness means and when i can see this you know understand this happiness and i also see what this continuity of happiness means then i can see that it includes what we call as peace satisfaction and bliss in itself right so this continuity of happiness includes peace satisfaction bliss this we will see you know by the end of this course we will be able to see that you know this the different states of the self you know at different levels of the self are called as happiness peace satisfaction and bliss so we will be able to define what is the exact meaning of them for example this peace peace it is you know talk is saying about my state of thought whether i am having a thought which is harmonious or a thought which is full of contradiction so if i am having a thought 
which is harmonious or in other words i when i'm thinking of harmony i am at peace peace at the level of thought on the other hand when i'm thinking of contradiction or if there are contradictions in my thought then i am not at peace so these are the different states of the self only which we will see in detail so essentially what i would say at this point is that this continuity of happiness includes peace satisfaction bliss right okay. <clears throat> but then we have to define all of this and we can define we can define because we can directly observe ourselves and our state of being and identify what it is you know and then we can give name to it name like peace satisfaction bliss as i said that harmonious thought or harmony in the thought is what we are calling as peace so this we can see you know within ourselves and then call it by this name peace but important thing is that we can see it within ourselves that it is a state of my being of the self how can i identify somebody who is happy how will i know what is, is there a sign that i can tell somebody is in this state of being happy <clears throat> you know this uh, um, on all these details we will work on as we go you know with this course right so um, i can just give an idea about how it would look like you know so we can see that when we are happy we are in a state of harmony within right this is what we i you know we have said about this happiness that happiness is to from harmony so when we are in a state of happiness we are in a state of harmony within and when we are in a state of harmony within it reflects in terms of harmony with the world outside this is important that it reflects in terms of harmony with the world outside right so these are the two main indication so if one person is in a state of happiness then he will be you know in a state of harmony with the and he will express this harmony with the world outside so he will be in harmony with the world outside on the other hand if we are unhappy right we are in a state of contradiction within then it reflects in terms of the contradiction with the world outside so by looking at the state of the person within and also looking at the state of the expression you know or the behavior of the person or work of the person we can find out whether he is in a state of harmony within happiness within or he is in a state of contradiction and unhappiness within so this question we keep asking in every workshop that if a mother is shouting at the child or beating the child right when does it she do it when she is comfortable within or uncomfortable within uncomfortable uncomfortable within right she is in a state of harmony within or a state of contradiction within contradiction yeah so this is something you can see you know that if something you know coming out is indicating towards the contradiction the person is in a state of unhappiness if something coming out of him is indicating harmony outside then it is an indication of the harmony within so he is in the state of happiness within so that this, means we are all unhappy <laughs> this is yeah this is uh, this is one indicator but then just by observing at the behavior you cannot be sure that this person is always in harmony and happiness maybe that he is you know trained himself that possibility is there so this is what i am saying that we have to ultimately check both you know whether he is in harmony with the world outside which i can see and also whether he is in harmony within that also i can see if i become a little more observant 
Yes, yes. You were saying something. No, I was saying that uh, uh, then we are all unhappy because at some point or other we get angry, we get upset, we get irritated. Yeah, true. So any reaction that we show outside is an expression of the reaction inside. If you look at our behavior, most of us tend to react. You know, we get angry, we get irritated. So all these are the different forms of reaction. And any reaction is an expression of this feeling of, you know, that state of contradiction within, unhappiness within. So in that sense, we can see that, you know, we are so uh, much in contradiction in a state of unhappiness within that we keep reacting to any small thing. Yes, so in that sense, we are in a state of unhappiness most of the time. But it seems almost impossible to be in a state of continuous happiness because sometime or the other, a lot of times, even if I'm trying, something happens and then I become irritated. So it seems very difficult or almost an abstract thing to be able to do this. It is difficult. True. It is difficult. But that's what we are saying, you know, that uh, whenever we are looking at something, and this is what we will uh, keep on, you know, kind of coming back to again and again, that whenever we are looking at something, let us ask these two different questions. Right? One is, is it desirable? Number two, is it feasible? Desirable, so, yes. Continuity feasible. of happiness, is it desirable? Desirable, yes. Feasible, yeah. and that is uh, doubtful. Yeah, so it is important to settle this first question. Is it desirable? If we can settle this on the basis of our natural acceptance, now we have to see whether this is feasible or not feasible. Right? We will also see whether we are working for continuity of happiness or we are working for momentary happiness. Hmm. Now that check I will, you know, uh, put in every time when I am working for happiness. I will ask this, whether I am working for temporary happiness, momentary happiness, or I am working for continuity of happiness. Right? Hmm. Now, <clears throat> If it is desirable, and this is settled that yes, we all desire for continuity of happiness, then we can look at the feasibility. Now, this is a question not, you know, kind of uh, put by us. Okay, this is a question which has been put in the whole tradition, you know, for thousands of years of human race. And we have people who have realized this, you know, that if we can understand this relationship, harmony and coexistence, and we can have this feeling of relationship for everyone, right? this feeling of harmony, this feeling of you know, relationship, feeling of coexistence. Right? That is what is called as love. You know. So if we understand this relationship, harmony and coexistence, and if we have this feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, that is feeling of love. And if we have this commitment for this feeling of relationship, then I can be in a state of harmony and happiness in continuity with it. Right. Probably we have to make a lot of effort because right now we are very far from that. <laughs> yeah, so this realization of relationship, harmony and coexistence, that is what is called as truth. Then feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, that is love. And then this commitment, you know, to work for this relationship, harmony and coexistence, that is com compassion. So this truth, love and compassion is what ensures continuity of happiness within, continuity of harmony and happiness within. 
because now i can see this harmony within myself with everything around in existence so i am in a state of harmony within in a state of you know a feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence and therefore i am comfortable within i am in a state of happiness within and this can be there in continuity because then i have no opposition no reaction mm -hmm. now once i have this feeling of love and compassion in me then i am comfortable within and whoever come you know i come across i express that feeling of love so i don't have to go around and try fulfilling this feeling or no or this thought but i am this you know having this state in me where i realize this relationship harmony and coexistence and i am in a state of that feeling of love and compassion so with that i am in a state of bliss you know, which is emerging out of it and to begin with what we can do is that even if we are able to see this relationship in harm and harmony you know for a limited time with a limited number of people and things we can see that it gives us happiness so this is something which we can always you know verify that even with little effort in this direction of relationship and harmony it makes us happy to that extent Mm -hmm. and therefore i can see that there is a possibility that if i can understand these things this relationship harmony and coexistence in their completeness and live with this in continuity we too can ensure the continuity of happiness that sense of bliss in ourselves so that seems to be a possibility for us also it has been a possibility for people who have realized this and they were with they they were with this feeling of love and compassion but for us even a small effort in this direction makes us happy so it shows the possibility but certainly we have to work for it and it is a long way yes. it is a long way to go because we have unnecessarily accumulated lot of reaction lot of opposition lot of contradiction within that has been our training that has been our education mm -hmm. so by education by training we have made ourselves unhappy so now let's work for the right kind of education where every child is given education you know to look within and find out that they basically need you know continuity of happiness and to and to ensure continuity of happiness they have to be in a state of harmony within and to ensure harmony within they have to understand this relationship harmony and coexistence which is actually acceptable to each other so they have to understand it and they have to have the feeling in accordance with it and then they have to work with it so we certainly need to you know develop that kind of education system where this is ensured for every child but till then we have to work you know with ourselves you know and share with others yes um if you can comment on this that um, we are saying we want this happiness but in tradition we keep saying that wanting something is the main reason for unhappiness so um, if you can just uh, give your observation about this yeah this is important you know and interesting as i as i said <clears throat> we are not saying don't have any desire we are saying have the right desire so this is one important thing so don't desire for momentary, momentary happiness desire for continuity of happiness that is the right desire that is number 1 number 2 when i work for this continuity of happiness which is my basic desire right where am i trying to ensure it 
am i trying to ensure it within or am i looking for it from outside that is important so whether i am looking for this continuity of happiness from outside or we are trying to ensure the continuity of happiness within this is a very significant issue right now if you look at what we have just talked about you know in this uh, discussion is that happiness and continuity of happiness is ensured by understanding the harmony right and having this feeling of harmony within so this is something to be ensured within and not something to be obtained from outside something to be received from outside right mm-hmm. so this difference we have to understand that this continuity of happiness which is ensured by understanding the harmony and having this feeling and thought of harmony you know within so this is something which has to be ensured within and not to be obtained from outside to get it from outside without working within then we are in trouble so yes. what is being said is that if we are trying to get this continuity of happiness from outside we are bound to be in trouble we are bound to be fail so this is what is being said that from outside what you can get is momentary happiness if you want continuity of happiness and if you try to get it from outside it will not work if you are trying to get happiness you know through favorable sensation from outside right it will not have the continuity if you are trying to get this you know happiness by getting some respect from outside it cannot have the continuity you are bound to be in trouble but if you are getting happiness or trying to get happiness by way of ensuring you know this understanding of harmony in the self the feeling of harmony in the self then there is a possibility you know to work for this continuity of happiness and to get that continuity of happiness don't have yes. this desire you know what seems is you know that what is being said is that don't have desire but what is being said is that don't have this desire to get continuity of happiness from outside mm. that is what is being said that kind of so what you're saying that kind is, of want is going to create problem um, so what you're saying is that instead of wanting happiness we have to be happy yes we have to work for being in a state of happiness mm. rather than trying to become happy by external inputs so this state of harmony is my state of being this state of happiness is my state of being you know it's not something which i am getting from outside so i have to work in myself i have to work within myself to ensure this harmony and happiness and its continuity and once i have this state i will share it with others so not only that i will become a source of happiness for myself but i can also become the source of happiness for others so rather than seeking happiness from others i ensure this happiness within myself right and then i share this happiness with others but when i am working for happiness for myself within me lot of things disturb me from the outside and there are so many problems in society so if you know it's like if we take this crude example that if my house is burning it catches fire then i have to put out the fire i can't be thinking about being happy and how can i be happy so in society today there are so many burning issues which are creating problems then how can i be happy in this 
yeah so i i would suggest that first put that fire off so if the house is burning we have to put the fire off if the society is burning then we have to ex- extinguish this fire you know but then how do you do it that is the problem so we want to solve the problem of resource depletion and problem of global warming and all these problems yes but then the question is how do we go about it so what we are saying and we are essentially working for that is that there is a way to do it you cannot have piecemeal solutions right mm. so what is the real answer to this problem this burning conditions the situation so if we want really to have a solution to this problem in the society or all the problem that we see in the society then ultimately we have to develop a system in the society which ensures the well-being of all right and this can be ensured by way of ensuring the continuity of happiness for one and for all right there is no shortcut so we have to ensure a system or develop a system in this society which can ensure this continuity of happiness for one and for all then only there will be peace then only there will be harmony in this society otherwise there are no shortcuts so we need to develop that system but then to develop that system we have to prepare the individuals the families so that is how we are going we are talking about harmony in the individual then harmony in the family then harmony in the society when we talk about society then we'll see what kind of society you know we desire for and how it can be resulted you know by way of you know developing this understanding of harmony and living in harmony by each and every individual by each and every family and so on so that is what we are trying to work for but then we can work for it step by step we cannot jump right mm-hmm. and the way we are trying to solve problems today we are creating more problem in the process than we are solving and that is why we have these problems increasing every day so so much of work is being done for pollution you know controlling pollution and stopping this resource depletion but if you look at it over 100 years last 100 years right this global warming problem is increasing or decreasing increasing increasing mm-hmm. so every time we are crossing the all time boundaries mm-hmm. yes so we are not solving problems we are muddling with the problems true and therefore creating more problems so what we are saying is that let us look for the solution solution for our own self solution for the other solution for everybody and then develop a system in the society where this is ensured for one and for all mm. and we i think we are not able to see this like as an example in our society uh for the mosquitoes they have decided to do fogging uh with some chemical and they think they are killing the mosquitoes but then it is causing a problem for everybody all the human beings because we are polluting the air and we are breathing all that yes and your mosquito becomes resistant to it faster than the human being so you are in more trouble now yes so mosquitoes have become resistant but you are suffering mm. yes so like that you know we are kind of education we are giving right we are preparing elders who are liability for the society and not asset for the society mm. so if a child is not going through this process of education he can still have some you know do some work in the field 
but if he goes through this education system he can no more work in the field and he becomes an unemployed youth mm -hmm. so are we creating solutions or we are creating problems true so first you try to provide education to everybody so called education and when the education is there this child has become unemployed now he has become a liability for the society for the nation and nobody is taking responsibility mm -hmm. so it does not mean that you don't give education it means that give right kind of education where he can become more meaningful you know for himself for the family for the society uh we were talking about prosperity and uh, you mentioned food also as physical facility so but food is a basic need so do we why do we call it physical facility yeah in fact the physical facilities have to be the basic need what else hmm. see what is happening is that the whole notions you know have gone wrong right physical facility means a facility you know which is physical in nature and which facilitates some of our basic needs <laughs> so food is a physio physical thing right it's physiochemical in nature mm. and it facilitates to nurture our body therefore we are calling it as a physical facility that is the meaning of physical facility right it facilitates you know facilitates to fulfill some of our basic needs right. mm -hmm. now if we are over indulging then it does not come under right utilization of physical facility it is a misuse of the physical facility and today what we are doing in the name of prosperity is we are promoting this consuming more and more whether you require or you don't so over consumption is considered to be the standard of living the standard of life <laughs> which is not true right utilization and nurturing others is going to be the standard of you know life not misutilization and exploitation of others what that is what we are doing in the name of physical facility today so what we are saying is that physical facility is basically supposed to nurture or fulfill our basic needs and it has to be rightly utilized for this purpose then we can identify the need of physical facility properly and once we identify the need of physical facility properly then we can see that either we are already producing more than what is required or there is a possibility to produce more than what is required for example if you look at this you know in any indian village even now with so much of exploitation going on even now the village is producing more than what is required for all the people in the village it is producing two times three times four times you know more than what is required in terms of food for example right everybody in the village has a house right now all these things which were so easily accessible you know you come to the city and you know it becomes so rare is scarce or making a house in the city is almost a lifetime job right so we make it so scarce so if we talk of it in terms of the basic needs yes we are either already producing more than what is required for all the people on earth or there is a possibility to produce more than what is required so this 2011 survey of united nations it says that 
we are producing something like 4.2 billion tons of wood grain and if you look at the need of the 700 crores people then you find that what is needed for all the people together we are producing six times more than what is required mm. yeah. um so you have to define physical facility properly and then identify the need of physical facility by identifying it as the need for basic needs of the you know uh, human being then we can see that yes we already have far more than what is required but if i can afford more then what is the problem in that supposing i mean i we i have sufficient number of clothes but i have the money i can afford to buy more clothes so what is the problem in that this is what we think you know and we go ahead with it but the problem is let's look at this example of food that would probably be more clear now if we have more food is it right to over eat no no it will create problem for me yes in fact today if you find you know that some 30% of the people are you know have become obese you know suffering from this problem of overweight problem in the sense that they are even finding difficult to move around keep their health good 30% is this problem of obese you know overweight is it because of lack of food or overeating of food overeating overeating so is it good not good not good because it is creating so much problem yes so this we should understand that this over consumption because i have more is not going to lead to solution it is going to lead to more problem mm. and there are two implications one is that it is not good for my health right number two if i am overeating i am misused using this you know resource and somewhere i might even de- de- might have been depriving others so mm-hmm. if one person is eating 15 times the average food consumption right then even if we are producing six times more he is eating at the cost of others he is eating at the cost of others so there is so much of scarcity of food you know. people are dying of hunger or malnutrition on the one side on the other side you know there are people who are overeating and suffering from obesity so there are two implication one is our own health the other is the impact on the health of the other people Hmm. so we have countries which is consuming 15 times the average consumption of the world now they are eating at the cost of others <clears throat> so there are two implications my problem and the problem which i am creating in this society so just because i have happened to accumulate more it does not mean that i will consume more what it will mean is that i identify my need of physical facility i produce more than what is required but i consume what is required and the remaining i share with others share with other you know people in this society invest it for the well being of the society as a whole so that sharing is important in fact you know in india this kind of action and i think it must have been done everywhere you know in the world uh, traditionally in india this has been uh, quite worked out you know like if you look at this langar system you know in india so this langar system is run in every gurudwara and you are provided food and place to rest you know wherever you are if you go there you will be provided with it 
right and no charge and how does it go so the farmers who are producing in their field 10% of their production you know they will kind of give it to gurudwara for the purpose of langar and by giving this 10% to the society everyone in the society is taken care of whoever needs he can go to gurudwara if you are moving going to some city or some village you know you can you don't have to bother about you know where to get food and where to rest this is provided by the people by their contribution to this now having more is to be contributed in this form having more is not to over consume or to accumulate if we over consume or if we accumulate we are creating problem in this society of course we are creating problem for ourselves hmm. yes yeah, so when you are saying time. in terms of food it seems uh, clear but uh, if i look at you know my need for physical facilities other than food um it's uh, very difficult to say how much i need how can i make out this need because uh, today like for instance health and so many issues might be there now this covid has come up so many uh, viruses keep coming up how much i will need to keep myself healthy that itself is very questionable so uh, how do i make out this need how much i require i mean we as we go uh, further you will see you know that if we really want to identify the need of physical facility then we have to be clear about these two needs you know two different types of need one is the need of the body the other is the need of the self and this physical facility mainly relates to the need of the body but if we confuse this with the need of the self then we are not able to define the need of the physical facility that is the trouble for example if i want to define the need of clothes for nurturing the body for protecting the body from the heat excessive heat excessive cold right then i can certainly identify how many clothes i need so i say you know let us say four pairs of clothes for one season and in india there are three seasons so 12 pairs of clothes right is enough but and this i can identify this each one of us can identify somebody may say four pair somebody may say no no why four pairs even two is okay somebody will say no no four is not enough let's have six because you can watch it only on sundays and like that which is fine you know let it be four or two or six or eight but one thing is very clear that this need can be identified and it is not unlimited in quantity but on the other hand let us see say that i am wearing clothes for getting respect from others then this need becomes undefined then you cannot decide how many clothes you need because if you have one clothes and you wear it go to the party and then next time you you say that no no i can't go with the same clothes because people will not you know pay attention to me so i need a different set of clothes so if you are going for a kitty party you know, every time you have to have a new sari or suit or whatever it is so this becomes undefined this become undefined i remember renu bhatia you know, one of the participant of this workshop uh was telling me long back and must be at least 10 years back that 
she was busy you know with uh, her friend uh, because this friend she was going to uh, america and for six months and she had to pack up her clothes and renu bhatia had to help her so it took them three days to you know pick up pick out the clothes and pack it many attaches of course so i said how can you spend three days you know just trying to sort out these clothes and packing it she said she has gone with 500 pairs of suit now it's so much a problem for you of course you are creating problem for others but even for you six months with 180 days 500 pieces of clothes carrying it all the way from here to there and every day trying to sort it out yes very difficult at least to me it seems very difficult for you may be okay not for gaining attention but supposing i am going to work different work or going to work different clothes for home different clothes for the night so four pairs seems very uh, no no make it more keep it 20 but it is still limited it is still limited so i would not get into those you know finer details i would say that okay you work out but if you are sincere about working it out it will turn out to be limited quantity and then you can see that whether you have more than that or not more than that so this example i was saying that if we really identify the need of food we are already producing six times more mm-hmm. than what is required and if it does not include many data of course because many of this you know um, things which are locally produced and consumed is not even you know taken care of in this surveys but i would not say four pairs or 10 pairs you know decide for yourself but do work out you know how much you really need in terms of clothes in terms of food in terms of shelter like i am told that in delhi many of the houses are vacant because people have bought these houses for investment right and there is nobody to live there and they don't want to rent out because there is problem of people occupying it and not uh, can uh, living it after that mm. 30% of the houses i was told are empty in delhi in place like delhi people are not clear you know i mean how much they have to accumulate because they have not identified their needs i mean people accumulating lakhs of crores rupees you know, this corruption issue has come up you know and it is said that many people have asset or the bank in the money worth lakhs of crores of rupees now they don't know what to do with it you know but they have not not even thought of it how much they have to accumulate yeah, and then and it is very difficult to share also yes it is very difficult to share <laughs> it is very difficult to share even the information yeah i want to say uh, yeah. as far vacant houses are concerned uh, big cities same is the record with the bombay bombay has got much more houses vacant as compared to delhi there is a rep- there is a complete report and uh, at the same time they don't have the net to occupy those houses at the same times uh, whosoever are wanting how there's also rent is also very high so this is a contradiction uh, now uh, the construction of a house one of the important material is sand and uh, sand is coming from river bed generally so yeah. ultimately uh, we require sand to be are exploiting the natural flow of river uh, and that causes lot of problem now people has started a movement that how to uh, um, uh, uh, restore the uh, rivers and that ultimately how to minimize the use of sand so while uh, thinking of alternate material 
even though the nature material is very important, nature sand is very important. So now there is a movement that how the construction, total construction is to be minimized. Uh, not only private sector, even in the government sector, large number of buildings are being constructed. Some buildings are already uh, unoccupied. So there is a movement going on. And they also contacted me and uh, asked me to join this movement, being a civil engineer, that how this uh, conception of sand can be minimized. So ultimately, the uh, construction activities can be minimized, that can be optimized. So there's a big movement is going on. I'm also a part to that. So this is very important that, that extra construction, extra facilities we are creating for the one that this, is, this will be a set for us for the future, for our children, for our generation. So we are going with this wrong notion that at the same time we are telling that if uh, your uh, generation is capable, they can create it. And if they are not capable, they can destroy it. So yes. on one way we are thinking in this way, but on another way we are doing the same. So this is a big moment also going on to minimize the construction in terms of reducing the uh, requirement of sand, which ultimately uh, causing a problem and uh, depletion of resources. So this information I wanted to share. Yes, yeah. true. 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 Yeah. I'm asking, suppose I ask a MCQ, a, a multiple choice questions, a student, happiness, is it a need or a value or a something like that, some, some MCQ question? Is happiness a need or a value? It is is value? Happiness is a need and it is need of the self. So it's a value. And whatever is a need, you know, is valuable for me. So it is also value. My question was, uh, if somebody is capable of earning more, with a target or a view that uh, since he is capable, he can earn and uh, can distribute uh, to the needy people. Uh, is it wrong? Because accumulating the physical facility means accumulation of the money as well or something like that. But the view is uh, since he is very capable, he can earn more, he can accumulate it with a view that it can be distributed and is distributing also to the needy people. Is it wrong? See, what I would say is that it is good to produce more. <clears throat> okay. But when we are producing, we have to produce it in a manner that it is fulfilling for human being and fulfilling for the rest of nature. Right. This condition has to be taken care of. Then yeah. now, if I produce more by way of this cyclic and mutually enriching process, then I will not consume more, right? We will consume only as much as required. True. So what do I do with the rest? I share. Yes. I share with the family, with the friends, with the members, people in the society. So that is what I do. In the hmm. meantime, there may be some accumulation, which is okay. When so I'm it is okay. It, it's not wrong. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So when I'm producing and I'm consuming and I'm sharing with others, still some thing may be, you know, left. So I will put that, you know, for the use of the society. But in the meantime, True. there may be some accumulation, which is okay. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing accumulation, you know, and then at some one point, I think that, okay, let me share. Then this idea about how much to accumulate has to be clear. That has to be clear. Otherwise, we might go on accumulating. <laughs> Thinking that, okay, sometime when I feel that there is too much, I will share with others. So it has to be a regular part, as I was mentioning about Punjab, you know, 10% of their 
crop you know they will offer to the gurudwara first ji ji and then take the remaining 90% to their you know feed their home so that sharing has to be there as a sense of responsibility hmm but even after sharing you might have more you know with you so that accumulation might take place but you are not tending to accumulate you your men, man, mentality is to share d yeah that is important d thank you thank you we are talking about uhv2 a foundation course in universal human values and ethics it has 28 lectures 14 tutorials in five modules and we are right now on module number 1 uh, there are these uh, different lectures actually we started with lecture 4 so 4 1 2 and next we are right now doing lecture number 3 so um, just wanted to place that and i also wanted to sort of suggest that there are handouts uh, which have all the material so please go into the you know study materials folder and download the material take a look at it so that would be useful thank you yeah. very much yes yeah. thank you very much thank you everybody